So on your home improvement journey, I'm sure you're comparing different types of wall insulation. The three most common are fiberglass, cellulose, and foam. I'm going to tell you the three different categories you should be considering. Let's talk about it. The first category, obviously, is thermal resistance, commonly referred to as R-value. Now, I do tend to make that distinction between thermal resistance and R-value because there are some differences between the two. R-value is the number that you will see advertised on every insulation material. That is what will be labeled on a package of a fiberglass or cellulose or on a tech sheet for foam insulation. Now, there are some things to keep in mind as a homeowner that R-value does not tell the whole story when it comes to thermal resistance. Now, there are a lot of things that play into that. There's different types of heat transfer, obviously, but R value will be the number that is oftentimes thrown out to you. So obviously in your research, you want a material that has an adequate R value and that is good at stopping heat transfer through thermal resistance. The next thing I want you to be thinking about is air seal. Does this material provide an air seal? Now in this comparison, there's only one of these materials that does provide an air seal and that is foam. Foam is the only one of these that is considered air impermeable, meaning it is an air seal. Fiberglass and cellulose, they can absolutely be an effective insulator. The only thing to keep in mind, like I said, is air can pass through it. You will find this on a house that's either in the middle of a remodel or something like that that has fiberglass, and you will find that the fiberglass that's sitting at the edge of a stud or a roof truss or something like that can oftentimes be dark or gray. What that is is dust that's been collected through it because in a lot of ways, it acts as a filter. Now cellulose, again, does stop more air than fiberglass, however, it can still allow air to pass through it. It is not air impermeable. So keep that in mind. When you're looking at these, air seal is crucial when it comes to retaining heat as well as keeping heat or cold out of your house. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is longevity. How long will these materials last? Fiberglass, it can vary. Some people will say, you know, you may want to replace it or at least check up on it within five to seven years. And cellulose, again, this will vary wildly, but a lot of people will say anywhere from seven to 10 years or more, depending on the type of application with cellulose. Whereas foam, you will generally get a warranty for the lifetime of the building, meaning that contractors will typically say that foam will last as long as that building is standing. Now, this is really important for homeowners. Anytime you're looking at remodels, it's going to be usually a very costly venture. So you're going to consider the cost and when you're looking at fiberglass, cellulose, and foam insulation, I tend to look at this as a good, better, best situation. Fiberglass, as I said, can work to insulate a house. It is typically the most readily available and the least expensive. However, with that, it's oftentimes going to be the least effective, which is the case when you're comparing these three materials. Cellulose, again, is a step up. It does perform better. It does last longer. You do get a slight increase in cost. However, it's not going to answer or check all of those boxes. When you get to something like foam insulation, yes, it is going to cost quite a bit more comparatively to fiberglass and cellulose, but when you factor in how long it will last and that you won't have to add more to it or replace it in seven to 10 years or sooner, that cost really starts to pay for itself. When you factor in the effectiveness and the overall cost for heating and cooling, again, that initial upfront cost combined with the longevity really starts to pay for itself. So these are things to consider as homeowners, right? Yes, you have a higher upfront cost, but the longevity of it is a one and done solution, whereas a fiberglass or a cellulose will have to be topped up or added to or even replaced in years to come. So definitely something to consider when you're comparing these. So as I said before, when you're comparing these materials, it really comes down to a good better, best sort of situation and deciding what fits best in your home. If you're in the situation that you think that foam is the most suitable option for you, you're in luck. Go to our link below, go to our find a dealer page where you can find your local retro foam dealer to have someone out and discuss the best options for your home. This is the Professor Foam reminding you that building is a science.